morning and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. <sighs> Eat Smoke Drink. It's a way of life. Eat Smoke Drink. Vitamin E, Vitamin S, Vitamin D. Eat Smoke Drink. Anyway, sorry I digress. Today I'm going to take you through the Gordon McPhail Cast Strength Series Manakmore Distillery 1993 27 years old. It is first fill sherry punchin. Punchin is a slightly longer and more rotund barrel. I believe it is because it's easier to roll. Um, but look, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just the barrel, you know. Um, that's what it's uh, basically been in. Uh, Monarchmore is a Speyside distillery. A bit underrated Monarchmore, I think. I've never tried this yet, but also Gordon mm. McPhail. I must say, Gordon McPhail has been putting out some strong game lately. You know, they've really been you know, they've really been taking the pants off and showing you what they've got underneath. It's fantastic. Manakmore um, usually is made for blends. In fact, I don't really see distillery bottlings for Manakmore. I've never seen a distillery bottling for Manakmore except for Flora and Fauna, I believe. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's usually used for blends. I believe Ballantines is the main blend. In some regional releases, you get Ballantines Manakmore, which is a single malt version, but a Ballantines umbrella um, which is a shame because I think that um, like a lot of whiskies they actually benefit from being single malt um, aged well and bottled as a single malt but nonetheless there's obviously reasons for that um, one of the reasons why that's not happening is probably because accounting purposes making as much money as possible which you can't blame people and maybe some cynicism as well um, but in saying that recently um, a lot of distilleries have been putting out their own distillery bottlings because there is a bit of a, a surge in um, distillery bottling, uh, a single malt um, uptake. But independently bottled whiskey, especially single barrels, there we go. So let's get sipping. First, my observation is, oh, sorry, I'm nosing. My observation is extremely, extremely dark. So that is obviously from the first full influence. So let's get nose in. Once again, I'm using the butt plug glass because it smells the best. <sighs> Can't mistake that sherry. Not sure what kind of sherry it is. It's not PX, but I'm thinking it'll be Oloroso or maybe they, um, they disassemble the barrel and then they reassemble it on site. So it could be a bunch of different sherries, but there is, I think there's definitely an Oloroso um, influence in that fruit cake in a glass orange zest orange marmalade candied orange leathery dirty soily smells like rust you know when you touch rusty steel in your hands and you've got that rusty steel smell it smells like that Smells a bit like raisin juice, cinnamon, coconut syrup, some brown sugar syrup, smoke. There's a smoke to it, burnt sugar, but definitely a smoke to it, a wood smoke, which is quite unusual. I don't know why, but there's definitely a wood smoke to that. Smell of glue smell of glue a bit of nail polish remover that could be the alcohol but definitely a bit of nail polish remover a hint of maple syrup some rosemary fresh rosemary not dry fresh rosemary just you know you snap the twig and you just touch it briefly rosemary Mm. burnt butter on pancakes burnt butter pancake so burnt butter pancake I've made this before and that's what it reminds me of you burn some butter you put it in the pancake batter you mix it and then you cook the pancake on more burnt butter burnt butter pancake hot wet stone 
by the river because it's got that earthy smell. And I'm not talking about a Southeast Asian inner city river where you've got used diapers and needles and, and human turds, okay? Um, I'm talking about you actually go to a natural area where you have a river and uh, you actually smell nature, soil and gravel, not ass gravel, you know, not butthole gravel, which is AKA poop, okay? So that's what I'm talking about the river. So if you're somewhere in those kind of countries, maybe you should really take a road trip out to nature and smell that what a river should smell like. Clay, I get a bit of clay in there, wet clay, pottery clay. Let's get sipping. Mm, beautiful. Ooh, that is delicious. Wow. Sweet forward. Sweet forward. Definitely some brown sugar syrup. Mm, the finish is quite long. It's really coating the mouth. What percentage is that? 52.3%. Mm. I'm getting a menthol aftertaste as well, like a menthol and eucalyptus, like a bit like Vicks. Tanginess, like a citrus, let's say lemon. Lemon, but transitions to a sweetness of a candied orange and orange peel. But that's, um, that's like having a Christmas cake in a bottle. It's a general proposition. You know, Christmas cake with raisins, orange, candied orange peel, cinnamon, cereal notes, cake notes, burnt butter, butter. Wow. Wow. That is Moorish as fuck. That is Moorish as hell. It is extremely rich. The finish is great. There's a funk, probably from the sherry influence, the barrel. There's a funk, fungal, dirty, leathery, but at the same time, creamy, buttery. Fantastic. A lot going on in that whiskey. A lot going on in that dram. Oh man, that is fantastic. That is, that is mother's milk. That is almost, that is so palatable that a child, a child could enjoy that. Could, but not saying they should, okay? It's R18 only, and in some parts of the states, 21. Or actually, it's 21 in all the states, isn't it? So it's 18 or 21 only, okay, people? God damn it, what is this? This is a responsible channel. Mm, I get a smoke on the back palate. I can't explain why. Can't explain how, but I get a smoke. Slightly herbaceous after a few sips, the herbaceousness develops and comes forward. Slightly herbaceous, a little oily and slightly, very, very slightly meaty. I don't know where that's coming from as well. I've never had a monarch more with a meatiness to it, I don't think. But slightly meaty, herbal, almost like a Sunday roast lunch with mint sauce and um rosemary sprigs in the roasting dish okay really fatty quite savory leathery tad smoky absolutely delicious that is a yes from me i think that is a great bottling that is a fantastic bottling okay it says autumn spice orange zest mixed nuts i didn't quite get the nuts but now I see it, maybe, all I can say is that, I, you know, I don't want to go there. Um, sweet apple fruit cake, okay. Yeah, look, I mean, it's quintessential heavily sherried whiskey here, with a twist. Um, not all of them is going to taste the same. Obviously, when you have them in a sherry butt or a sherry puncheon or sherry cask, especially when it's first full, you're going to get a lot of that Christmas cakey fruitiness and spiciness coming through. And that is pretty quintessential. 
that is very very in fact very quintessential sherry cask um space side whiskey it is a great whiskey uh fantastic fantastic 27 years old as well i'd have it with something special um, i would pair this with a very very spicy peppery strong cigar okay um a cuban that is very robust a trinidad um cuban not the trinidad non-cuban because those are shit i couldn't even finish one i don't know what they were thinking but anyway a trinidad cuban but also uh, maybe an lfd double lejero or a natural Arturo Fuente or a sun grown undercrown. A sun grown undercrown would be perfect with this, or a sun grown, uh, maybe even the flying pig. So just something small. I wouldn't say sit on this the whole night. I would make this the last dram of the night. Um, but it's not so sticky like a PX cask. So I think you could have it first as long as you have some heavily peated and robust whiskies following, um, because sherry tends to drown some bourbon cask whiskies afterwards, okay? Nevertheless, last sip. Fantastic, great dram. I highly suggest it. Until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink. Make sure you hit subscribe, that bell. And if you can, and if you can, I implore you, forward my video to whiskey loving people as well because I really love all your support out there. Cheers, thank you.